There's something deeply wrong with German DNA, something that shouldn't be possible according to everything we know about population genetics. Beneath the surface of one of Europe's most documented nations lies a genetic paradox so profound that every new discovery only deepened the mystery. Picture this. Bavaria, 2018. Archaeologists excavate a 5th century burial ground and find women with artificially elongated skulls, a practice from the Central Asian steppes thousands of miles away. The DNA analysis comes back. East Asian ancestry buried with full honors alongside Germanic elite. No invasion, no conquest, just there. History has no explanation for how they arrived or why they were revered. Now jump forward to 1347. The Black Death sweeps across Europe like wildfire. Half the continent dies in agony, yet certain German villages emerge virtually unscathed. Scientists centuries later discover why. A genetic mutation called CCR5 D32 that renders carriers nearly immune to plague. Germans carry this mutation at some of the highest frequencies on earth. Did plague literally rewrite German DNA, or was something already protecting them? The contradictions multiply the deeper you look. Northern Germans carry more Viking genetic markers than actual Swedes. Eastern Germans harbor Slavic bloodlines that official history claims were erased. The Rhineland holds traces of North African DNA that migration maps say never happened. Open any genetics database, and Germany fractures into 49 distinct genetic populations, each one telling a different origin story, each one contradicting the others. So here's the question that haunts geneticists. Why is German DNA the strangest in Europe? And what if the answer reveals something about human history that we're not supposed to know? Because this isn't about borders or politics or national identity. This is about bloodlines that refuse to vanish, genetic signatures that shouldn't exist, and a truth written in chromosomes that challenges everything we thought we understood about who Europeans really are. To understand why German DNA is so strange, we need to go back 45,000 years to a time when Germany didn't exist and Europe was a frozen wasteland. During the last ice age, massive glaciers covered Scandinavia and pushed south toward what would become Germany. But small populations of hunter-gatherers survived in ice-free refugees, clinging to existence in one of the harshest environments humans have ever faced. These ice age survivors developed remarkable genetic adaptations. Enhanced vitamin D synthesis that allowed them to survive with minimal sunlight. Altered fat metabolism that helped them extract maximum energy from scarce food sources. Physiological cold resistance that modern populations have lost. Research published in Nature by Dr. Xiaomei Fu and colleagues analyzed ancient DNA from these Paleolithic Europeans. They discovered something remarkable. These hunter-gatherers were the original source of the genes for blue eyes and light skin that dominate northern Europe today. But here's where the German story becomes strange. While most European populations show only trace amounts of this ancient hunter-gatherer ancestry, Germans retain 10 to 15 percent of this Ice Age genetic signature. It's as if something in the German genetic landscape preserved these ancient bloodlines while they faded elsewhere. Dr. David Reich's research on European population history reveals that this preservation isn't random. The genes that survived are specifically those related to cold adaptation, immune function, and metabolic efficiency. These weren't just random genetic survivors. They were functional adaptations that continued providing advantages long after the Ice Age ended. But why did these ancient strands persist so strongly in Germany, while elsewhere in Europe they vanished almost entirely? What made the German genetic landscape so hospitable to preserving humanity's Ice Age heritage? Around 7,000 years ago, the first great genetic replacement swept across Europe. Farmers from Anatolia, modern-day Turkey, brought agriculture, pottery, and an entirely new genetic profile. They carried darker hair and eyes, different blood types, and haplogroups like G2A and mitochondrial lineages H, T, J, and K. These Neolithic farmers gradually replaced the Ice Age hunter-gatherers, establishing agricultural communities across Europe. For thousands of years, their descendants dominated the genetic landscape. Then came the second wave. Around 4,800 years ago, the Yamnaya steppe herders from the Pontic Caspian region swept into Europe with bronze weapons, horses, and an aggressive expansion that genetic studies describe as catastrophic. Dr. Wolfgang Hock's research, published in Nature, documents what happened next. Approximately 90% of male lineages in Central Europe were replaced within a few generations. The genetic signatures of the Neolithic farmers virtually disappeared, replaced by steppe ancestry carrying haplogroups R1b and R1a, along with genes for lactose tolerance and increased height. This should have been a total genetic replacement. 
the archaeological and genetic evidence suggest a near-complete population turnover. Yet here's the paradox. In some German regions, Ice Age and early farmer genes still survive at measurable frequencies. Ancient DNA from Bronze Age German burial sites shows individuals carrying mixed ancestry, steppe warrior genetics combined with surviving farmer and even hunter-gatherer lineages. Somehow, despite the genetic collapse documented across the rest of Europe, these ancient bloodlines found refuge in German populations. If the Yamnaya takeover was near total, how are these ancient lines still measurable today? What protected them in Germany when they disappeared almost everywhere else? Between 2800 and 2300 BCE, something remarkable happened in prehistoric Europe. A cultural and genetic network called the Bell Beaker culture emerged, named after their distinctive pottery. But this wasn't just about pottery. It was about the first truly international trade network in European history. Bell Beaker people traded amber from the Baltic, copper from the Alps, gold from Ireland, and even ivory from distant lands. They created exchange routes that connected Britain to Hungary, Spain to Poland. And at the center of this network sat Germany. Germany became a prehistoric crossroads where genes, trade goods, and cultural innovations mixed with unprecedented intensity. DNA analysis shows that genetic diversity in Bell Beaker, Germany exceeded that of surrounding regions by significant margins. But here's where the mystery deepens. Despite this diversity, modern German men today overwhelmingly carry a single Y chromosome haplogroup, R1BU 106. This lineage can be traced directly to Bell Beaker warriors and later Frankish elites. Dr. Olaldi's 2018 study in Nature analyzed over 400 ancient European genomes and revealed something extraordinary. The Bell Beaker expansion into Germany was accompanied by an almost complete replacement of male lineages, but significant retention of female lineages from earlier populations. This pattern suggests something specific happened during the Bell Beaker period. Not just migration, but a cultural or military system that allowed a small group of men to dominate reproduction across multiple generations. How did a single elite male lineage dominate so thoroughly that it still defines millions of Germans today? And why does this pattern appear more extremely in Germany than anywhere else the Bell Beaker culture reached? Ask most people about German origins and they'll mention Germanic tribes. But genetic evidence tells a different story, especially in southern Germany. Bavaria, the Rhineland, and much of southwestern Germany were Celtic territory for centuries before Romans arrived. The Celts left more than place names and archaeological sites. They left their genes. Modern genetic analysis of Bavarian populations reveals something that challenges traditional narratives. Southern Germans show more genetic continuity with Iron Age Celts than they do with Northern Germanic populations. Haplogroups associated with Celtic populations appear at elevated frequencies. Mitochondrial DNA lineages trace back to pre-Roman Celtic communities. Dr. Peter Forster's research on European genetic geography shows that Bavaria and Austria form a distinct genetic cluster that has more in common with Celtic populations of France and Switzerland than with Northern German regions. But here's the puzzle. Despite this Celtic genetic substrate, the culture and language shifted to Germanic during the migration period. How? The answer lies in what geneticists call elite dominance, a small group of politically and militarily powerful individuals imposing their language and culture on genetically distinct, distinct populations. The Franks, Alemanni, and other Germanic groups conquered Celtic territories, but they didn't replace the population, they replaced the identity. This creates one of the strangest aspects of German DNA. Bavarians carry more genetic continuity with ancient Celts than with Northern Germans, yet all are considered German. The genetic map and the cultural map don't align at all. Why do Bavarians carry such strong Celtic continuity when the historical narrative emphasizes Germanic identity? And how many other European populations are living under cultural identities that contradict their actual genetic heritage? While Western and Southern Germany show Celtic genetic persistence, Eastern Germany tells yet another contradictory story, one of Slavic ancestry hiding beneath German identity. During the 6th and 7th centuries CE, Slavic tribes expanded westward into territories that are now Brandenburg, Saxony, and Mecklenburg. They established settlements, fortified towns, and a cultural presence that lasted for centuries. Eventually, Germanic expansion pushed back. Through a combination of conquest, assimilation, and Germanization policies, the Slavic population was culturally absorbed. History books often describe this as a complete replacement. But the genes tell a different truth. Y chromosome haplogroup 
R1a, strongly associated with Slavic populations, appears in eastern Germany at frequencies up to 25%, comparable to some regions of Poland and the Czech Republic. Dr. Mark Stoneking's research at the Max Planck Institute analyzed genetic patterns across Germany and found clear evidence of this Slavic legacy. Eastern Germans form a distinct genetic cluster that shows closer affinity to Slavic populations than to Western Germans. Mitochondrial DNA studies reveal even higher levels of Slavic ancestry through maternal lines, suggesting that while Slavic men may have been killed or displaced during conflicts, Slavic women were integrated into Germanic communities. Today, Eastern Germans carry heavy Slavic ancestry, yet identify completely as German. Place names in Brandenburg and Saxony, like Berlin, Leipzig, Dresden, have Slavic origins, but most residents are unaware of this linguistic and genetic heritage. How does German identity erase the clear Slavic DNA that still persists in millions of people? And what does it mean for identity when genetics and culture diverge so dramatically? Just when you think German DNA can't get any stranger, the outliers appear. Genetic signatures that shouldn't be there according to any standard migration model. The Rhineland, Germany's western region, was under Roman occupation for over 400 years. Roman forts and cities like Cologne and Trier housed legions recruited from across the empire. Spain, Syria, North Africa, the Balkans. Ancient DNA from Roman-era cemeteries in Germany reveals soldiers carrying haplogroups J2, E1B1B, and other markers typical of Mediterranean and Middle Eastern populations. These men didn't just occupy Germany, they settled, married local women, and left genetic traces that persist today. But the Roman influence pales compared to the Bavarian skull mystery. In 2018, genetic analysis of 5th century burials near Augsburg revealed something extraordinary. Women with artificially elongated skulls, a practice associated with Central Asian nomads who showed genetic signatures from East Asia and the Balkans. Dr. Joachim Berger's research team determined these women had migrated to Bavaria from regions near the Black Sea, possibly linked to Hunnic expansions or diplomatic alliances. They weren't captives. They were buried with honors alongside high-status Germanic individuals, suggesting intermarriage at elite levels. Even more remarkable. A 2012 genetic study found that approximately 1% of Germans carry North African genetic markers specifically associated with Berber and Tuareg populations of the Sahara. These aren't recent admixtures. They trace back centuries, possibly to Roman soldiers from North African provinces or medieval trade contexts. How did DNA markers from the Sahara Desert, the Central Asian steppes, and the Levant end up embedded in German lineages? And how many other impossible genetic journeys are hidden in European populations? Sometimes the strangest aspects of DNA aren't about where it comes from, but about which genes survived against impossible odds. Between 1347 and 1353, the Black Death killed between 30 to 60% of Europe's population, but mortality rates varied dramatically by region. Some German towns lost 90% of their population, others survived with minimal losses. Scientists searching for explanations discovered a genetic mutation called CCR5D32. This deletion in the CCR5 gene makes carriers highly resistant to plague bacteria. Remarkably, this mutation appears in Germans and Northern Europeans at some of the highest frequencies in the world. Around 16% carry at least one copy. Dr. Christopher Duncan's research suggests the Black Death created massive selective pressure that increased CCR5D32 frequency dramatically. Communities with high frequencies of this mutation had significantly better survival rates, and their genetic legacy dominates modern populations. Did plague literally sculpt German DNA? The evidence suggests yes. Regions that were hit hardest by plague show the highest frequencies of protective mutations today. But disease isn't the only force that shaped which bloodlines survived. Political systems and inheritance laws also played crucial roles. The Habsburg dynasty, which ruled much of German-speaking Europe, practiced intensive inbreeding to preserve power within the family. This created genetic conditions like the famous Habsburg jaw, a mandibular protrusion caused by repeated expression of recessive genes. Even more significant was the Frankish practice of Salic law, which permitted inheritance only through male lines. This legal system gave enormous reproductive advantage to elite males, allowing a small number of men to father children with multiple women while excluding non-elite males from reproduction. The result? Y chromosome haplogroup R1BU106, associated with Frankish elites, now defines the majority of German male lineages. A handful of successful medieval families literally became the genetic ancestors of millions. Did culture, disease, 
and elite politics decide which genes would dominate today? The genetic evidence suggests these forces were more powerful than migration or natural selection in shaping modern German DNA. When genetic testing companies like 23andMe analyze German DNA, they don't find one unified genetic population. They find at least 49 distinct genetic subgroups, each corresponding to historical tribal regions. Alemanni, Saxons, Bavarians, Franks, Frisians, Thuringians, and dozens more. Dr. Peter Ralph's research on European genetic structure reveals that Germany shows more internal genetic diversity than countries twice its size. This isn't just regional variation, it's evidence of distinct ancestral populations that have maintained separate identities at the genetic level for over a thousand years. The regional paradoxes are striking. East Frisians, who live in northwestern Germany, show closer genetic relationships to Dutch populations than to Bavarians in southern Germany. Bavarians cluster more closely with Austrians and even northern Italians than with Saxons. Eastern Germans show more genetic similarity to Poles than to Western Germans. This creates a profound question. Is German a DNA identity at all, or just a political construct layered over Europe's genetic crossroads? The answer appears to be the latter. German is a linguistic and political identity that unites populations with dramatically different genetic origins. Unlike island populations or isolated groups that show genetic uniformity, Germans are among the most genetically diverse pop populations in Europe. This diversity creates advantages and challenges. On one hand, genetic diversity generally increases population health and resilience. Germans show lower rates of certain genetic diseases precisely because their gene pool is so mixed. On the other hand, this diversity means there's no single German genome that can be defined or studied. Every genetic study of Germans must account for massive regional variation that reflects thousands of years of complex population history. Modern nationalism often assumes genetic unity underlying cultural identity, but German DNA proves that identity and genetics can diverge completely. Millions of people who identify as German carry Celtic, Slavic, Roman, Scandinavian, or even Central Asian genetic signatures that contradict simple narratives of ethnic origin. German DNA is a puzzle box, a fusion of contradictions, anomalies, and legacies from every corner of Europe and beyond. It's not just strange, it's still unsolved. Every genetic study raises more questions than answers. Every ancient DNA sample reveals another impossible migration, another surviving bloodline, another contradiction between genes and identity. The German genetic landscape is Europe's crossroads written in blood, a place where every invasion, every migration, every cultural shift left permanent marks that science is only beginning to read. German DNA is a puzzle box, a fusion of contradictions, anomalies, and legacies from every corner of Europe and beyond. It's not just strange, it's still unsolved. Every genetic study raises more questions than answers. Every ancient DNA sample reveals another impossible migration, another surviving bloodline, another contradiction between genes and identity. The German genetic landscape is Europe's crossroads written in blood, a place where every invasion, every migration, every cultural shift left permanent marks that science is only beginning to read. We've journeyed through 45,000 years of genetic history, and contradictions keep multiplying. What do you think explains these genetic contradictions? Are you German or of German ancestry? Share your family's origin story in the comments. You might be carrying bloodlines from places you never imagined. If you found this genetic mystery fascinating, subscribe and hit that notification bell. We're exploring the hidden genetic histories that challenge everything we think we know about European origins. And share this video with anyone interested in genetics, German history, or the surprising truth about ancestry. Because the more we learn about DNA, the more we discover that human populations are far more complex, mixed, and mysterious than any national narrative has ever revealed. Your genes tell stories. Stories of survival, mixture, and impossible journeys across continents and millennia. The question is, are you ready to discover what your DNA really says about who you are? Thanks for watching.